Hello, beloveds, and welcome to Christian Emotional Recovery, a podcast for those who are survivors of childhood trauma, emotional neglect, and narcissistic abuse. This podcast is hosted by Rachel Leroy, a college professor and trauma survivor. Many of us spend years trying to heal and don't get anywhere. We don't always target the trauma itself, which is so often what keeps us stuck. This podcast is where faith meets science. Rachel is an emotional healing expert with 20 years of experience applying healing modalities that helped her start making progress after nothing else worked. She'll show you how to do the same. Each week, we'll cover a topic that will show you how to heal trauma for good. Please check out our website and show notes at christianemotionalrecovery.com and join the Facebook community, Trauma Survivors Unite Christian Emotional Recovery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Christian Emotional Recovery. This is Episode 6, Season 4, Moving Right Along. I'm your host, Rachel Leroy, and I wanted to just do something a little different today because um, a lot of these podcast episodes are more structured, and sometimes I like to just speak from my heart whatever God puts on my heart, and I don't even know what I'm going to say. And so for this podcast episode, that's what I'm going to do. This is season four, episode six, and it's healing unworthiness. Just a reminder that you matter and you are loved. And sometimes we just need a pep talk, don't we? And it's good to kind of step back and take a look back at everything kind of from a bird's eye view. And so that's what I wanted to do today. So I'm just going to say whatever God puts on my heart. As always, please remember to check out the Facebook group, which is Trauma Survivors Unite Christian Emotional Recovery. You can check out the you can check out the pages christianemotionalrecovery.com, which is more where the podcast is housed, and you can also check out my website rachelleroy.com. That's Rachel Leroy.com, and that's where you can find more about the platform, and you can also sign up for the newsletter, and that comes out when I can get it out, and also you can check out other resources and freebies and sign up for the email list. Also check out the YouTube channel. I'm hoping that there will be new episodes coming soon, if not already, and also check out, that's also called ChristianEmotionalRecovery.com. ChristianEmotionalRecovery.com. And also, if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing, like I said, I work f- about three quarters time, uh, almost a full-time job. And so I do the podcast as a labor of love when I'm able to and when God um, allows my health to allow me to. So if you'd like to support the podcast, you're also supporting other people like you who are survivors of trauma. You can go to Patreon, and there are several different tiers where you can contribute money monthly, or you can go to ko-fi.com, ko-fi.com and make a one-time contribution of any amount. All of those, everything that I just mentioned, are linked in the show notes, so check that out. So, healing unworthiness, a reminder that you matter and you are loved. So, most of us that have survived trauma, especially childhood trauma, and have most of us that have high ACEs scores, like adverse childhood experiences. And most of us that have been survivors of narcissistic abuse and other forms of abuse, childhood emotional neglect, sexual abuse, and so on, physical abuse, whether it's in a relationship or in our childhood upbringing or in other situations, we do have this feeling in our soul of core unworthiness. And it's very sad because God never intended for us to feel that way. And I can't answer the question, why does God allow children to be abused? That is something I've asked myself many times. And it's a very, very difficult question to wrestle with. And I'll be honest that I don't have an answer But I also know that if we let bitterness and distance from God, because I know this from experience, I've struggled with this bad my life, and I'm going to be honest, I have, and I still do struggle with it some, that it's like, God, what the heck? You know, I understand that feeling. 
but it leaves you in a place of loneliness and despair and betrayal and anger and unresolved trauma that is very difficult to heal. And I'm not saying that there aren't people who are unbelievers that don't heal trauma. Of course there are. But for us as Christians and as believers and as spiritual people, I believe that having a close relationship with God is what is part of our foundation for our healing. And it's part of what helps us to heal our unworthiness because we have an identity in Christ and our identity in God as joint heirs. And if we read the scriptures about our identity in Christ and about grace and about how radical Christ and God's grace are and how the Holy Spirit is always with us and how God loves us unconditionally and how God is our protector and our healer and our comforter and our friend. And I think about scriptures like Psalm 91 and I think about other scriptures like the prodigal son and I think of ones about the hairs on our head you know, that God can count the hairs on our head and that God knows every sparrow. I don't know if that's the right bird, but you get the idea. If God knows every sparrow, how much more will he know and value us? And there's just scripture after scripture about our joint heirs with Christ's identity and about who we are at our core in terms of our worthiness. And, you know, this gets a little bit into theology, I guess, and I'm not a theologian. But just from my experience, and I could be wrong, you know, um, please show me some grace. I could be wrong here. But there are people that think that at our core, and I know this is a very, uh, what's the word, Calvinistic interpretation of Scripture, and I don't buy into that. That's just my opinion. Like I said, I could be wrong. But the Calvinistic more view of Christianity is I'm depraved. I am worthless. I am nothing. I am a worm. Some people call it worm theology, and I just don't buy into that kind of theology. I do believe that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but that doesn't mean we're depraved. I believe that Christ would not have died for something that was unworthy and something that was worthless. And some people say, well, Christ is what gives us our worth. Yes, and I also believe that, and this is, again, just my opinion, take it or leave it, I also believe that why would Christ give us our worth and die for us if we didn't have intrinsic worth to begin with? Christ would not have died for us if we didn't have intrinsic worth to begin with. If we're joint heirs with Christ, and if we're the children of God, then we have inherent worth. If we're made in the image of God, and we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and if Christ knew us and God knew us when we were knitted in our mother's womb, then we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and we do have intrinsic value. That's why on this channel I always talk about the core worth that a human being has. I always talk about agency and autonomy. God did not give us free will if he, it wasn't free will. We have free will, and that's why I believe in upholding the dignity, the agency, and the value and worth and choice and free will of every human being. Now, you know, when we start getting into children, of course, children need guidance and children need correction. But I'm even with children... A lot of people with some of these more old-fashioned interpretations of Scripture, not even old-fashioned sometimes, but just more, let's just say stringent interpretations of Scripture believe that children are to be seen and not heard and that they should be beaten and whipped and that they're um, depraved and they need to have the rebellion basically drained out of them. And I think that that kind of interpretation, though not always, is more likely to be a narcissist running the family or a narcissist having a lot of influence in the family, there's more likely to be abuse. There's more likely to be this belief that children are depraved, that they're not autonomous human beings, which they are. And if you go back and look at some of my podcasts, I talk about Erickson's stages of development and the ACES, which is Adverse Childhood Experiences, Children need structure and boundaries, and children also need love and compassion, and there is this sort of balance there. There is, in older generations, this is a pattern, it's not true for everybody, obviously, but in older generations, children's upbringings were often too harsh and too 
di- too disciplined, if that makes sense, where children were, like I said, to be seen and not heard. Oh, you stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. People were tougher and grittier, which is a good thing, but there was also that harshness in a lot of cases. And then a lot of times in the younger generation, again, not always, a lot of parents, well-meaning parents, wanted their kids to have everything that they didn't. They wanted them to feel safe. They wanted them to have a good upbringing, especially if they were brought up that way, but they overcorrected in a lot of cases where there was no boundaries, no structure. The child was not allowed to learn from their mistakes and to learn some resilience and to learn to deal with the realities of life that sometimes things are disappointing and we need to learn to cope with that. And so validating a child's experience and setting boundaries and loving them all at the same time is a good combination. And a lot of kids get that. But unfortunately, each generation has its own unique challenges. Whether you're from one of the older generations or one of the younger ones, you may be facing challenges from your upbringing that you're trying to heal from and correct. Maybe you're trying to learn some balance here like I did. Maybe you're like I did where you had one parent that was way too far one way and the other one that was way too far the other. So you got both ends of the spectrum. And in some cases that came together harmoniously and it worked, right? But if it was in an unhealthy and a toxic way, it didn't work. And you kind of are confused because you don't have boundaries, but at the same time you have these self-hatred voices and tapes playing in your head where you feel unworthy and you feel like you don't matter and you feel like you're not loved and you feel like there's something wrong with you intrinsically. A lot of us growing up, our parents, our caretakers, or the people around us, if there was any kind of mental illness, if there was any kind of narcissism or childhood emotional neglect, or parents just didn't know how to parent properly, and I'm not a parent, I'm not judging, I'm just making a statement about cause and effect, then a lot of times children came out with emotional problems. And then the parent on top of that would say, wouldn't even be able to see the mistakes that they made or acknowledge them, whether it's because they had so much shame, they couldn't acknowledge it because they didn't care and didn't think that that was actually happening and invalidated their child or because they just didn't understand what was going on, whatever the case may be. A lot of times you might have even been told, well, if you have anxiety or you have depression or You deal with all these mental health issues, whether it's an eating disorder or ADHD or whatever. Well, that's you. You were born that way. It's probably genetic. And so on top of having the shame of unworthiness, of not feeling good enough from our upbringing, a lot of times we have that heaped on us of you were born that way. You're intrinsically deficient. Now, those might not be the exact words you were taught, but a lot of us, that was the implicit message, and in some cases, the explicit message. Well, if there's something wrong with you, that's because it's you, you know? And even if you weren't blamed directly, or maybe you were in some cases, that sticks with you. And so the whole point of this podcast And one of the reasons that I started this podcast is I found, especially in Christian communities, that people are taught, you can't go see a therapist. It's not, it's not scriptural. You can't go see a psychologist. It's not biblical. And, but I believe that the agency and the dignity and the core worth of every human being is scriptural and is biblical. And sometimes for some people just praying And reading their Bible and being healed is enough. But for most people, they need to do that healing work with a professional, with a witness who can help them. And I believe that God gave us psychology and psychotherapy and meditation and body work. You know, like I said, you don't have to do all of these forms. Do what you feel like is right for you to do and give other people the freedom to do the same even if you don't necessarily understand or agree with everything everybody does. Now, are there certain things we shouldn't do? Of course. In my opinion, I don't think we should be doing some of the really weird stuff, (laughs) but I'm not going to get into that right now. But the point is, is that if you feel unworthy at your core, if you have mental illness, notice I say have mental illness, not are mentally ill. It's something you have. It's not what you are. It's something you have. It's not who you are. Who you are is that observer inside of you that witnesses the inner child that might need nurturing or kindness or love or just kind words. That 
inner core inside of you that's always steady, that's always the same, that knows deep down that it has value and worth, that he or she has intrinsic worth, that part that can neutrally and objectively and with kind awareness observe the emotions that are happening in the body. That's you. That's your soul. That's your core identity. And then all of those feelings and thoughts and storylines and narratives and all of that core unworthiness is stuff that's been programmed in us. And so if at our core, we're always the same, If God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and we're made in his image, I would argue that we are at our core also. But there's the other part of us that's not, right? The part that is prone to mortality and sin and shortcomings and mistakes that we all have. And that's okay. Part of this is to understand that your worth is intrinsic and that no matter what happens and how you've been programmed, you can keep that core identity intact. And as you do the reprogramming, you're able to come more to your true self, and that comes more to the surface, the part that is safe, the part that's always the same, the part that has intrinsic worth, the part that's at peace, the part that's like a lake, that's like glass. It's just calm. It's always the same. So I want you to know that if you feel unworthy, you are worthy. If you feel worthless, you do have worth. If you feel like you don't matter, you do matter. If you feel like you're not loved, you are loved. God loves you. You matter to God and you matter to a lot of other people in this healing community. And if you feel unworthy, that is your programming. That is not who you are. That's not your core identity. Your core identity is your intrinsic worth and your worth in God and Christ. And Knowing that and remembering that and meditating on scriptures about that and reading about that and listening to teachings about that and reconditioning yourself. Like I said, it's not just the therapy and the body work and the meditation and the journaling. It is about studying scripture and about praying. But it's a combination of all of it, a holistic approach. And I actually have a podcast episode from a couple of years ago that talks about why we need to take a more holistic approach approach in a like a more integrated approach holistic and integrated are kind of similar that mean the whole person in our theology and when it comes to trauma because there are so few religious communities that are trauma informed there are becoming more and there are some that just refuse to become trauma informed because their teachings and their i guess theology is so Calvinistic and so about the depravity of the human being that it forgets to talk about the dignity of the human being and the beauty of the human being and the fact that God made us and that that is good. Didn't in Genesis God made everything and made creation and he said that is good? That is so basic that we were meant to be something that God treasures and values and that matters and that is good and positive overall, even if there's a lot of things in the world we don't understand. So the whole point of this message is that, like I said, you matter, you're loved, you are worthy, and sometimes it's good just to be reminded of that and to have a pep talk that your human worth is not in what you do. It's not in how much money you make. I know that it's difficult if you struggle financially. I do understand that. And that sometimes you're like, God, why? If you pray for decades, not years, decades for financial improvement and you look for jobs and you work hard and it just doesn't happen, that makes you feel like you're not worthy. But let me tell you something. Focusing more on your healing journey, not denying the reality of your situation, but focusing more on your healing journey and remembering that your worth is there and it's intact, and it's intrinsic no matter what your outside circumstances are. Even if you're in a situation where somebody is not valuing you, or if you're trying to be a giving and loving person, and it's difficult, and you're struggling, know that you're not alone. Know that you're not the only person who faces those challenges, and I don't mean that in a way where it's like, invalidating you, but on the contrary, there's a community of people that feel the way you feel. They can understand what you're going through. They can understand 
the experiences that you have. You are not alone. And there are so many wonderful communities, this one and other ones, Christian and other ones, that help to empower and heal people and bring them together and connect them and make them feel like they're not alone. And it's so important in this journey, in whatever way you can connect with other people, connection with like-minded people is so important. Finding healing communities and healing spaces, finding kindly and loving Christian communities, finding general communities where you have things in common with people are ways that you can start to feel connection. If you don't have family and friends, there are other ways. There's social media, there's therapy, there's free support groups. There's other types of ways that you can connect with people. The internet is a mixed bag and social media is a mixed bag. I know that it's created a lot of, quite frankly, idiots and a lot of people making claims of being experts of things they don't know anything about and conspiracy theorists and let's not go down that rabbit hole. But the whole point is, is that the positive side of social media is that You're not alone if you're going through a health issue. You're not alone if you have an interest in something. You're not alone if you're struggling with this because you know other people are going through it because they share their experiences and they share the strategies that have worked for them. And they come to the community for prayer and for healing and for encouragement and just to share their experience. And so seeing other people's experiences, even if you don't share yours, helps you to know you are not alone and that God loves you. And that other people care about you and love you and that they understand, even if it's not exactly what they're going through, they do have an understanding of what you're going through. And the point of connecting with other people isn't to commiserate as much as it is to find that healing and that empowerment. Because when you make that connection, that sends the devil running, so to speak. And that also is one of the greatest threats to shame and to anxiety. When you feel connection, you feel peace and you feel wholeness and you feel safety and you feel resourced and you feel engaged with other people and empowered. And that's what this community is all about. And that's what your connection with God is all about. We have responsibilities to God, but God also has things that he does for us, promises about being our friend, like I said, our comforter, our protector, our healer, our presence in times of trouble, that embodied presence that we can practice when we're feeling alone or feeling afraid, that's also a connection if there's no human available online or in person. There's also animals. Don't underestimate the power of a therapy animal. I know some people tend to take that a little far when they take their animals places, but I am all for having a cat or a dog or a lizard or a bird, if that helps you to have companionship, if you need physical touch and it's something or someone to hold, that's great. There's a lot of ways you can help yourself to feel safe, like weighted blankets and pillows and covers and stuff like that that also help at certain times if you need it. But just know that you're always resourced. And the more resources that you can get and that you can find and that you can use and to remind yourself and be aware of those so that when you need them most, you do use them, you are going to help yourself to get through those difficult times, even if there's not another human being there. You have God, you have your resources, you have the professionals you can reach out to, even if it's free resources. You have your apps, you have social media, and so forth and so on. The point is, know that you are not alone, and know that you can heal, and know that you have intrinsic worth And that if you are feeling like you were born at your core unworthy or something is wrong with you, you were not born unworthy. You were not born with something wrong with you. That doesn't mean some of us don't have illnesses or predispositions towards certain mental illnesses, but at your core, who you are, that's not who you are. Who you are is who you are in Christ. Who you are is who you are at your core in terms of your identity that cannot be changed from the moment you're born. So keep in mind that you are valuable, that you matter, that God cares about how you feel. God cares about what you're going through. God will listen if you pray. God loves you. And so do the people in this community. But I just wanted to put it out there and give you a pep talk and just remind you that you matter and that there's nothing wrong with you at your core, and that you have intrinsic value, and that your agency and your autonomy matter, and that they matter to God. 
So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to check out the YouTube channel, Christian Emotional Recovery. Please support the podcast at Patreon or Ko-Fi. Those are all in the show notes. Check out the Facebook group, Christian Emotional Recovery. And also check out the websites, Rachel Leroy, R-A-C-H-E-L-L-E-R-O-Y.com and Christian Emotional Recovery, exactly how it seems like it's spelled, dot com. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope that this has been helpful to you. This has been Season 4, Episode 6 of Christian Emotional Recovery. Have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Christian Emotional Recovery, hosted by Rachel Leroy. For links to this week's resources and to join the discussion, check out this episode's show notes at christianemotionalrecovery.com where you can also find links to our YouTube channel and Facebook group. Join our email list and get other episodes and resources. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate and review the podcast and tell a friend who may benefit from this message. See you next time. And remember, beloveds, God loves you, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made.